I want you to lift up your hands unto heaven. I don't know what you are believing God for, for this morning. I don't know what you are trusting God for. But whatever it is that you are believing God for, whatever it is that you are trusting God for, I want you to understand that this morning the provision is available. The provision is available. I just want you to open your mouth and just begin to talk to the Father. Speak to the Father concerning that miracle, concerning that breakthrough, concerning that open door, concerning that favor, concerning that elevation, concerning that testimony, concerning that healing, concerning that divine intervention. Open your mouth and just speak to him, talk to him. Tell him that this morning you want to hear his voice. Tell him that this morning you want to receive guidance, you want to receive direction from him. Open your mouth and talk to him. Open your mouth and talk to him. Open your mouth and talk to him. Rokopochi Kamahanta Rekamahanta Kapalia Kata Rokopochi Kamahanta Kapai Rekamanti Kipilia Kate Kapai Maria Kapo Papai Maranka Pantu Akape Papai Rokopoli Kamahanta Kapai Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please, you may be seated in the heavenly places hallelujah amen and amen well this morning i want to teach you on a subject i have entitled the prayer of declaration somebody say the prayer of declaration or oh, say it like you mean it the prayer of declaration for the last time the prayer of declaration and so for the past couple of weeks I've been teaching on the different kinds and the different dimensions of prayer because you must understand that there are different kinds of prayer there are different dimensions of prayer there are different types of prayer oftentimes we pray but we don't get our desired results and we don't get our expected result because oftentimes we are not praying the type of prayer that suit our situation, that suit our condition, that suit our circumstances in order for us to get the desired result. And that is why I have taken it upon myself by the leading of the spirit to teach these different dimensions and different levels and different kinds and types of of prayer and this morning I'm teaching on the prayer of declaration the prayer of declaration I want you to quickly turn your Bible to the book of Matthew Matthew is in the Bible Matthew is in the Bible Matthew chapter 21 the verse number 20 and 21 Matthew chapter 21 the verse number 20 and 21. And please, I want you to be upstanding for the reading of the word. There is nothing that we can honor on this earth and respect on this earth like the word of God. Hallelujah. So wherever you are seated, I want you to be upstanding for the reading of the word. Matthew chapter 21, the verse number 20 and 21. And I read, and when the disciples saw it, they marveled. Somebody say they marveled. Somebody say they marveled. They marveled saying, how did the fig tree wither away so soon? How did it wither away so soon? Verse 21. So Jesus answered and said to them, assuredly, 
Somebody say, assuredly. Assuredly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also if you say, somebody say, say. That word is so important as it relates to the topic. Somebody say, say. Say it again, say. So he says, also if you say to this mountain, if you say to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, it will be done. Hallelujah. Please, you may be seated. The prayer of declaration. Now, I want you to understand under the sound of my voice that the prayer of declaration is different from the prayer of petition. The prayer of petition and the prayer of declaration, they are not the same. They are not the same. Now, when it comes to prayer of petition, you speak to God. When it comes to prayer of petition, you speak to God. What do I mean by you speak to God? When it comes to prayer of petition, that is that kind of prayer where you pray like this. God, I need your divine intervention. God, I need a breakthrough. God, I need you to open that door for me. God, I need a supernatural divine intervention. God, I want you to speak for me. Be my attorney in the courtroom. God, I want you to be my physician in the hospital or at the clinic. God, I want you to turn this situation around for me. God, I want you to give me a testimony. God, I want you to turn this storm around. God, I want you to come true for me. That is the prayer of petition. And so, in the prayer of petition, you talk to God and you ask God. But when it comes to the prayer of declaration, you speak to situation. You speak to conditions and you speak to circumstances directly based on the word. I want to say it again. When it comes to prayer of declaration, you don't speak to God. You speak to your situation directly. You speak to that situation. You speak to that circumstance. You speak to that complexity. You speak to that battle, that warfare, that attack, that demon, that spirit, that entity. You speak to your circumstance based on the word. That is what we call the prayer of declaration. The prayer of declaration is also the prayer of proclamation. Is the prayer of proclamation. It is also a prayer of manifesto. What do I mean by manifesto? When you speak to your situation or the condition, you don't just speak to the situation. You don't just speak to the condition. You don't just speak to the circumstance. But you speak and address them as you want it to be. You speak and address them as you want it to be. And so, if the circumstance that I am confronted with doesn't favor me, I speak to that circumstance to favor me. If the condition that I am in looks hopeless, when I am speaking to that condition, I speak hope to that condition directly. By my declaration, by my proclamation, and by my manifesto. Are you with me? That is what we call the prayer of declaration. And I want you to stay with me as we embark on this journey. Quickly turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 1, the verse number 28. Genesis 1, the verse number 28. 
So watch this very carefully. Genesis chapter 1, the verse number 28. He said, then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion. Somebody say, have dominion. Somebody say, have dominion. Somebody say, have dominion. And then he says, have dominion over the fish of the sea. Somebody say, over the fish of the sea. Which means that God is saying, this dominion, dominion is synonymous to authority. Dominion is synonymous to power. Dominion is synonymous to influence. And so what God was saying is this. I have given you dominion over the powers that operate in the sea. I have given you dominion. I have given you influence and power and authority over the powers in the sea, over the forces in the sea, over the demonic entities, the satanic entities, the principalities and the powers, the cosmic powers that operate within the regions of the sea, the aquatic powers, the marine spirit, I have given you dominion over them. Now, if God says that I have given you dominion and authority and influence over them, then it means that when you are praying, you don't seek the authority from God. You don't seek anything from God, but by the dominion that you have been given, by the authority and the power and the influence that you have been given, you address the forces of darkness that operate in the regions of the sea directly. So you can say that you marine spirit that want to stifle my life, you marine spirit that want to take away my blessings and my breakthrough, you marine spirit that is causing stagnation and delay in my life. I command you in the name of Jesus. Lose your hold over my life. Lose your hold over my finances. Lose your hold over my marriage. Lose your hold over my relationship. I silence your powers. I hurt your activities. And every device that you are using against me. I neutralize it. I dilute it. I render it non-effect. And I bring it to hell. What are you doing? You are addressing the forces of darkness, the powers of darkness that are in the regions of the sea directly. That is what we call the prayer of declaration. The prayer of proclamation. Let's continue. And then he said, over the beds of the air and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Now, so you must understand that this dominion that has been given to us, it is not only over the sea. It is also over the heavenly realm. The forces of darkness, the powers of darkness that operate in the heavenly realm. So everything in the heavenly realm, we have been authorized. We have been empowered. We have been given the ability, the momentum, the capacity. We have been given the impetus. We have been given the authority to speak to them. And when we speak to them, they must oblige. When we speak to them, they must come to divine compliance and alignment to the will of God, to the purpose of God, to the counsel of God, based on what we have spoken proclaim, declared to those things. We also have authority and dominion over the earth realm, which means that anything that is on this planet earth, you and I, we have authority and power and dominion over it. We have authority. So we have authority in three realms, in three jurisdictions. We have authority in the realms of the sea world. We have authority also in the heavenly realm. 
we have authority also in the earthly realm. That is the dominion that God has given to us. And by this dominion, you are able to address things directly. Whether in the heavens or in the sea and on the earth. And they must obey you. And you do that through what I call the prayer of declaration. The prayer of declaration. So the previous scripture that we read, it was the disciples in the book of Matthew. <clears throat> the disciples were astonished about what they saw. What happened? Jesus was with his disciples and Jesus saw a fig tree. At this time and at this season, the fig tree was supposed to be bearing fruit. Because every tree that bears fruit has its season to bear fruit. So the fig tree was in its season to bear fruit. So Jesus was expecting the fig tree to have fruit. But unfortunately, the fig tree had no fruit. So what? watch what Jesus did. Jesus prayed a prayer of declaration. A prayer of declaration. What did Jesus do? Jesus just spoke to the fig tree and said to the fig tree, because you didn't bear fruit in your season, you are dead. You see, he didn't pray that God let the fig tree die. Because the fig tree didn't bear fruit in its season. He didn't pray that prayer. Because that prayer is a prayer of petition. And when we look at Jesus' life, there are times that he has prayed a prayer of petition. Like when he was in the garden of Gethsemane, he prayed this prayer. He said, Father, this cup is too much for me. So you see, he wasn't addressing anything directly he was speaking to God directly he said father this cup is too much for me it is impossible it is difficult it is complex how am I able to drink this cup and then he said father nevertheless not my will but your will be done that prayer is a prayer of petition but when it comes to the fig tree, he addressed the fig tree directly. He spoke to the fig tree directly. And he said, you fig tree, die because you didn't bear fruit. And the Bible says that the disciples saw Jesus prayed a prayer of declaration by speaking to the fig tree to die. And they left. They came back the next morning and they saw the fig tree dead and they were amazed they were surprised they couldn't believe it because they just heard Jesus spoke to the fig tree that the fig tree should die the following day the fig tree was dead and so out of their amazement and their awe and their astonishment they said to Jesus the fig tree that you just spoke to that the fig tree should die. The fig tree is there. And then watch what Jesus said. Jesus said, if you have faith like the master said, you can say. Somebody say say. The say over there, it is declaration. Declaration. You can say to this mountain. To this mountain. Mountain is a symbol of battles. Mountain is a symbol of warfare. Mountain is a symbol of storm. Mountain is a symbol of adversity. Mountain is a symbol of difficulties. Mountain is a symbol of obstruction. Mountain is a symbol of hindrances. Mountain is a symbol of impediment. Mountain is a symbol of resistance. Mountain is a symbol of opposition. And so Jesus said to them, you can speak to the opposition and command the mountain by saying through the prayer of declaration, 
move out of here and go into the sea and the mountain will oblige. He didn't say, when you say to God to remove the mountain for you, that is not what he said. He didn't say, God will remove the mountain for you. No. He didn't also say, pray to God to remove the mountain for you. What he said is that, shoo, shoo, shoo. Somebody say me. Somebody say me. Somebody say me. He said, you will speak to that mountain and command the mountain to be uprooted and removed into the sea and the mountain will obey the prayer of declaration. The prayer of declaration. That is why oftentimes we don't get our desired results. We don't get our desired expectation because what you are waiting on God to do, God is waiting on you to do it. What you want God to do for you, God is saying, it is within your power. I have given you the capacity. I have given you the ability. I have given you the authority, the dominion, the influence. You can handle this situation. You know, there was a story. I have shared it before so many times. And some of you also probably might have heard this story. It's about he's my spiritual grandfather. Archbishop Benson Idahosa of blessed memory. Benin City, Nigeria. That is my spiritual father, Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams' father. He trained him. And so by spiritual genealogy, he is my spiritual grandfather. So there was a conference of witches, worldwide witches, that was going to be held in Benin City. And these witches, they were so bold, they were so audacious that they even advertised the witchcraft conference on the national television that there is going to be a world witchcraft and wizards conference. And it was being promoted on national television. And so he saw it and he went on the, the television and said that not in my city. This witchcraft conference, it will not happen in Nigeria. It can't happen. Now, the organizer of the World Witchcraft and Wizards and Warlocks conference went back on the television and said that it is going to happen and even God cannot stop it. And so, the late Archbishop Benson Idahosa also went on the national television, the same television, and addressed it and said, what you said, I truly agree with you and you are correct. The reason why God will not come down to stop it is because I am here. I am here. I am not asking God to stop it. Me. I am stopping it. You see, that is the kind of dominion and power and authority and influence that God has given us. He had a meeting with this organizer of this World Witchcraft Conference. They all met at the television station. He challenged him to meet him there. They all met. When they met, the guy was going on and on. How all witches and wizards all across the world will convey in Benin City. And nobody can stop it, including God. He was going on and on and on and on. And then Idaosa asked him, are you a witch? Are you a wizard? I don't need you to explain. Just say yes or no. If you say yes, they will carry your corpse now, 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 now. They will carry your dead body now because it is written, suffer not a witch to live. I will kill you here in the studio now. When he saw power 
and authority. The man said, I am just an organizer. I am not a wizard. I am just organizing for them. And then he said, I am telling you that the conference will not happen. And the conference never happened. You see, God didn't need to come down to stop it. Why? Because he has a representative, an ambassador. The Bible says that ye are God. As he is over there, so are we over here. So we have the same authority and power and influence. Now listen to me. The word of God in your mouth is as the word of God in God's mouth. The word of God in your mouth is as God's word in his mouth. Which means that whatever you declare, whatever you speak to, that thing must obey you as when God speaks to that thing. That is what we call the prayer of declaration. Sometimes you must learn how to hold your body when your body is ravaged with sickness and disease and infirmity. You must know how to hold your body and say, body, hear the word of the Lord. This body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit cannot cohabit with sickness and disease and infirmity. And so wherever you are coming from, I eat and evict you out of my body and never return again. This is what we call the prayer of declaration. Somebody say the prayer of declaration. Which means that if I don't like my atmosphere that is around me, I can change the atmosphere through the prayer of declaration. How do I change the atmosphere through the prayer of declaration? By speaking directly to the atmosphere and declaring and decreeing and proclaiming what you want to see. And so if the atmosphere is chaotic, I speak cosmos. I speak other structure. If the atmosphere is an atmosphere of grief and pain and anguish, I speak to the atmosphere that there will be peace, that there will be calmness, that there will be joy, that there will be laughter, that there will be celebration. When you do that, we call it the prayer of declaration. Listen, there are situations that need to change in your life. There are conditions that need to change in your life. There are circumstances that need to be turned around in your life. If only you will address it directly. If only you will speak to it directly. Sometimes uh, when you are going for the interview, you must pray the prayer of declaration. As I am going to this interview, I declare that the position is mine. I declare that they will give me this job I cannot be denied I cannot be disappointed nobody will delay or deny me of this position this position is mine and nobody else I am talking about the prayer of declaration the prayer of declaration the prayer of declaration is that kind of prayer where you begin to speak to yourself you begin to speak into your destiny you begin to speak into the situation I am not barren I am not barren you spirit of barrenness it is written there shall be no barrenness in the land I cannot be barren I am fruitful I am blessed. I am prosperous. I operate from the place of more than enough. I operate from the place of abundance. There is no power, entity, there is no spirit or agent of the devil that can bring me to the place of scarcity, to the place of poverty, and to the place of lack. Why? Because I have declared it. And as I have declared and decreed, so shall it be. The prayer 
of declaration. The prayer of declaration. Somebody say the prayer of declaration. I want you to quickly turn your Bibles to Psalm 8, the verse number 6. Psalm 8, the verse number 6. Psalm 8, the verse number 6. When you pray the prayer of declaration, you are making an official statement. You are making an official declaration, proclamation. You are decreeing an official manifesto based on the word that this is what will stand. When you pray the prayer of declaration. Psalm 8, the verse number 6, watch this. He said, you have made him to have dominion. Somebody say, I have dominion. Somebody say, I have dominion. Or say it again, I have dominion. He said, you have made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. Who is him? You and I. You and I. He said, he has given us dominion. Over the works of his hands. Whose hands? God. In other words, everything that God has created, God has given us the dominion over it. And so we can speak to them and they must hear. We can decree to them and that which we decree must stand. Why? We have dominion and authority. And watch this. And he said, you have put all things, what? Under his feet. You have what? Put all things. Now, you must understand, not half of the things. Not 50% of the things. Not some of the things. But all things. Which means that ancestral powers and yokes they are under your feet. Generational curses are under your feet. Witches and wizards and warlocks, those who practice necromancy, the wicked activities of the enemy and the manipulative acts of the enemy and the craftiness of the wicked and the devices of the enemy is under your feet. Is under Failure is under your feet. Defeat is under your feet. Why is it under your feet? Because you have been given the dominion. You have been given the authority. You have been given the temerity. You have been given the influence, the power, the impetus to put it under your feet through the prayer of declaration. Through the prayer of declaration. Somebody say the prayer of declaration. Somebody say the prayer of declaration. You see, this same dominion is spoken of in the book of Acts. Jesus told the disciples, go to the upper room. At the time, Jesus had died and Jesus has resurrected. He was going back to the Father. He was going to heaven. And then he told the disciples, now, when I am gone, the father will not leave you comfortless. He will send the comforter, the Holy Spirit, the paraclistos, in my name. And then he said, go to the upper room, wait there for him. The Bible says that they waited in the upper room for the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says that the Holy Spirit came into the upper room as a mighty rushing wind and tongues of fire came upon their head and they began to speak in other tongues. And then the Bible says that when they began to speak in other tongues, they received what? Power. Somebody say power. power. Somebody say power. power. Somebody say power. power. 
Now, this power here, it is not dunamis. This power here is called exosias in the Greek. Exosia simply means authority. It simply means influence. It simply means dominion. It simply means you have the ability, God's ability to change anything. 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 That is why you can pray the prayer of declaration and look at yourself and say, I cannot be poor. I can't be poor. I will not die a divorcee. I won't die in shame and in reproach. It is not possible. It is not. I am talking about the prayer of declaration. The prayer of declaration. Now, I have said this thing so many times, but for the benefit of my teaching, I am going to recapitulate it again. I told you that oftentimes, when my boys go to sleep in their room, I will, in the middle of the night, when they were very young, in the middle of the night, I will go to their room to check if they are sleeping well and, and cover them with the blanket is the blanket is off of their body, cover them and everything. And oftentimes, when I enter into their room, I stand there for a while and I see them tossing through and flow on the bed. I immediately know that they are not sleeping well. They are struggling to sleep. If they are struggling to sleep, it means that a strange spirit has entered into their room because the Bible says he gives his beloved what? Sleep. So there shouldn't be any struggle at all in any form or shape. I don't take medication to sleep. If I want to sleep, immediately my body hits the bed. I am gone. He gives his beloved sleep. So when I watch them and they are tossing through and flow, I know that a strange spirit has entered into their room that is causing and making them not to sleep the way they are supposed to sleep. And usually, I just do one thing. I just open their door ajar. And this is what I do. You foul spirit. What are you doing in this room? Get out! And I just close the door. They sleep like a little baby. One day, my older son, Zurel, couldn't sleep in the middle of the night. Came to my, to my room and said, Daddy, I can't sleep. I said, let's go. So I took him to his room. I said, lie in, in your bed. So he lied in the bed. I opened the door. I said, you stinking, smelling, stench spirit. Get out of this room. You can't be here. You are crossing a red line. Get out. And I just closed the door and walked out. In the morning, he came to me. He said, Daddy, when you said, get out of this room, you stain spirit and stinking, smelling spirit, get out. I saw a shadow crawling off my bedroom wall and just flew out. And then this is what he told me. He said, Daddy, I will never again come to you and tell you that I can't sleep. When I can't sleep, I know exactly what to do. I will just open the door and I will command the spirit that is in my room to get out. And ever since, it has been years now, over eight years, none of them have ever come to me and told me I can't sleep because they know what to do. The prayer of declaration. The prayer of declaration. The prayer of declaration. Sometimes, your child, that, that son, that daughter of yours, that is so <clears throat> recalcitrant and so rebellious 
rebellious and defiant and walks in disobedient. Sometimes you must lay hands or hold him or her and pray a prayer of declaration and say this, you foul spirit, you spirit of rebelliousness and disobedient and defiance, hear me, this is my son, this is my daughter, this is my child and I'm not going to allow you to destroy his life, to destroy her life, to destroy his destiny, to destroy her destiny. I command you from henceforth as a father, as a mother, I have authority over his life, over her life and over her destiny. Wherever you are coming from, get out and go and never return again. We call it the prayer of declaration. You are not talking to God. You are addressing the situation, the condition, the circumstance directly by the authority that has been given to you. Prayer of declaration. Satan is not my mate. I'm bigger than him. So when I'm dealing with Satan and the kingdom of darkness, I don't deal with him and his horse of demons as equals. No, I don't do that. Why should I? <laughs> Why should I be addressing Satan like we are mates? Why should you be addressing witches and wizards like you are mates? You are not mates. They are not your equal. You are not standing on the same pedestal. The influence and the power and the authority that you carry, they don't carry the same thing. Oh, you don't understand. Let me show you in the Bible. Turn your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 1. I believe the verse number 28. I want you to see it from the word. Ephesians chapter 1, the verse number 20 and 21. Ephesians 1, 20 and 21. Now, watch this very carefully. Because some of you, you address the enemy and you address the kingdom of darkness. One, as if they are superior to you. They are not superior to you. Some of you, you address Satan and the forces of darkness as if you are mate. You are not mate. You are higher. You are bigger. Watch this. We are reading the word. Which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Raised who? Jesus from the dead. And watch this. And seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places. Somebody say heavenly places. Somebody say heavenly places. Now let's continue. Heavenly places. And watch this. Say that with me. Far above. Far above. Say it again. Far above. All principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this age but also in that which is, is to come. So watch this. When I am dealing with the forces of darkness and with the powers of darkness whether they be territorial spirit or ancestral yokes and powers or satanic and demonic authors or witches or wizards or spiritual host of wickedness in the high places, I don't deal with them from the earthly realm. I deal with them far above. Far above. I deal with them from the heavenly places, from the throne room perspective, where all authority and power proceed. And so oftentimes, I will say this in my declaration. I position myself in the heavenly places. Far above principalities and powers and thrones and dominions and deities. And I declare in the name of Jesus, 
stop your nonsense now and they must obey they must obey we are not mates we are not equals we are not standing on the same pedestal don't mess with me look at somebody and tell them and tell the person the devil cannot mess with me that is where you will pray from that is where you will pray it. I remember many years ago when this ministry was about to start where we used to be the property we were using it belongs to an Indian woman so the Indian woman has agreed and everything it, it was a warehouse has agreed and everything to give us the property to start this ministry prayer city eagles chapel so myself and and the then administrator and the wife we were in the building with the owner so we we're just looking at it and everything and whilst we were looking at it all of a sudden there were some two gentlemen with black suits white shirt with black tie dressed very pristine walked in and they said oh we are looking for the owner of this building and the woman said i am the owner what can i do for you and so they said uh, can we see you privately but the privately wasn't far from us so these people were telling the owner they want this building they need this building so the owner told them oh I just rented it out to these people for church. And then they said to her, we would double whatever they are paying monthly. So I was standing there, I heard it. And the two people who were standing with me also heard it. So we would double it. The landlady told them wait the landlady walked up to us and the landlady said you see those two gentlemen that are there they said this property they will pay double of what you are going to pay and you know me I'm a businesswoman. I give it to the highest bidder to make profit since you came first if you can match them I will let them go but if you can't I have to give the building to them. I said, no. We will agree on what we have already talked about. For which purpose and reason we are here. He said, then I can't give the building to you. I'm going back to them. So he went back to them. And then this was a Saturday. So they agreed that they will meet on Monday. Sign the agreement, contract and everything. And they can start using the building and they were there and they did it every, and they were they agreed upon it right in our presence i was standing there for a while and a, a holy hunger somebody say holy anger somebody say holy anger a holy indignation rose up in my spirit and i'm telling you you don't want to see that because it makes me crazy and i don't care who is around so I just lifted up my hands and I said, you these people, I freeze your account. I freeze your account and this property is not going to anybody. It is ours. The landlady laughed. Those two gentlemen look at me like, what is, what in the heaven is happening here? Is this guy crazy or something? That was all that I said. They left. I left. I told the landlady, I will be waiting for your call on Monday. He said, no, I won't call you. I won't call you. You have to call me if you want to match them. I said, no problem. So we left. On Tuesday, I received a call from the landlady. The landlady called me. He said, Pastor, these stupid people 
that came the other day when they told me that they are going to rise. I said, you don't need to tell the story. I remember very well. He said, do you know that Monday, the Monday I came, they said 10 o'clock as you heard. I was there. I was waiting, waiting, waiting for them. I called them and then they told me that there was something wrong with their account and everything and they, were, they wouldn't be able to pay the security deposit and everything. So when she told me that, I said, what did I tell you? He said, you didn't tell me anything. I said, I told you, I will be waiting for your call. I said, do you remember the prayer I prayed? I have frozen their account. The property is ours. And guess what? The property was ours. We didn't pay higher than originally negotiated. In fact, that property, the landlady was begging me to sell the property to me. He wanted to give it to me, sell it to me. I didn't say, God, freeze the account. I said, me, I freeze the account. Declaration. I will show you another prayer of declaration. Elijah entered into the palace of King Ahab. Elijah. Elijah. He entered into the palace of King Ahab. He said, according to my word. Not according to the word of the Lord. He said, according to my word, there will be no rain for three and a half years. Your majesty, God bless you. And he walked away. According to my word, I am talking about the prayer of declaration. If you will know how to pray the prayer of declaration, the misery you are in, you will not be in. The frustration you are in, you will not be in. The pain that you are in, you will not be in. The anguish that you are in, you will not be in. The tears, the disappointment, the delay, the stagnation that you are in. The sleeplessness that you have been having, you will not have it. If only you will pray the prayer of declaration. You are looking from, for power to come down from heaven. When God is saying the power is within you. Just speak. Are you ready to marry? Call forth your husband. Call forth your wife. Wherever my husband is, hear me. You have to meet me and I have to meet you. Today, in the name of Jesus, wherever you are, I subpoena you by the authority in the name of Jesus. And I declare that we will meet, we will connect, and the counsel of God will stand. I am talking about the prayer of declaration. You have a business, clients are not coming. Call forth the clients. Get up, lift up your hands, and say, I call forth the client. In the tens and in the hundreds, I call you forth from the north. I call you forth from the south. I call you forth from the east. I call you forth from the west. Call them forth. We call it the prayer of declaration. The prayer of declaration. I want to show you another scripture. And then I will conclude. Turn your Bibles quickly. To Mark chapter 4, the verse number 38 and 39. Mark chapter 4, the verse number 38 and 39. Mark 4, 38 and 39. And I read. It says, But he was in, in the stand. Watch this. But he was in the stand. This scripture is powerful. Watch this. He said, But he was in the stand who Jesus asleep on a pillow at the bottom of the sheep. He was asleep. Jesus with his disciples who were up. He was at the basement of the sheep. Watch this. And they, and they awoke him and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? Now, why are they saying that? Because there was a contrary wind. There was a storm that was coming up against the ship and against them. And this ravaging storm and wind will cause the ship to drown or capsize. So they were afraid of their lives 
And Jesus was at the basement of the sheep sleeping. So the disciples ran down to the basement and they said, Master, why are you sleeping? Don't you care about our lives? Don't you care about our lives? Let's continue. Verse 39. Then he arose. Who arose? Jesus arose. Watch what he did. Then he arose and rebuked the wind. He didn't say, Father, let the wind stop. Father, let the storm stop. No, that is not what he did. He prayed a prayer of declaration by confronting the wind and the storm directly and also telling the wind and the storm what to do. So watch this. He said, then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace be still. Peace be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great calm. He spoke to the wind and the storm. Peace be still. And quickly the wind, the storm, obliged to what he said. And there was calm and there was stillness. When you carry this authority and power, I want you to understand that you can speak to the elements and they will oblige. There are situations that you find yourself in that are boisterous, turbulence, chaotic, unrest, you must learn how to speak to that situation and say, peace be still. In your marriage, speak peace be still. In your business, speak peace be still. At your office, at your workplace, in your business, speak peace be still. In your home, speak peace be still. And what you say and speak, that is what will stand. It is by this same prayer of declaration that the children of the Israelites led by Joshua was in a battle with the Philistines. And the Bible says that time was going against them and they needed time in order to avenge the enemy and to destroy them and completely annihilate them. And it was getting dark. And when it was getting dark, their enemies were building momentum. And they were advancing and prevailing against the armies of Israel. Because you must understand, the devil operates in the dark. And in order for them to prevail and to overcome and to completely obliterate them, they need the, the, the light. And the Bible says that, and Joshua stood before the congregation and the armies of Israel and watch this he didn't say God I need light God I need the sun God I need the moon he didn't pray that kind of prayer that was in the prayer that he prayed look at what he did he looked at the sun and he said, sun, stand still. Moon, stand still. Sun, stand still on Mount Gibeon. And moon, stand still on Mount Ajalo. And guess what? The sun stood still. And the moon also stood still. And the Bible says that they didn't hesitate to go down. And the Bible also says that there was no day, Joshua chapter 10, there was no day like that day that God hearkened unto the voice of a man. Where a man, by prayer of declaration, command the sun not to go down. And the sun stood still. And the moon also stood still. 
scientists have come to a conclusion that there is one day missing out of creation and that was the day when Joshua stood and prayed prayer of declaration and commanded the sun to stand still and the moon to stand still I'm talking about the prayer of declaration you are waiting on God and God is saying I am waiting on you you are waiting on God to speak and God is saying you speak and I will say amen what does it mean you speak and I will say let it be let it be so as you have spoken that is why so many of us we are frustrated we don't know what to do but having heard this message I know you are coming into your breakthrough I know you are coming into your miracle your testimony is inevitable I know you are breaking through and you are breaking out on every side I know you are going to smile again you are going to celebrate again you are going to jubilate again what have been taken from you there is going to be restoration there is going to be restitution you are going to see the glory of God like you have never seen before why because this is your time and this is your season and by the prayer of the you will take full possession by the prayer of declaration you will inherit your inheritance by the prayer of declaration you will dispossess the forces of darkness and the powers of darkness and you will possess what is rightfully yours by the prayer of declaration rise on your feet somebody say the prayer of declaration I want you to pray the prayer of declaration now. I don't know what kind of situation. I don't know what kind of circumstance that you need to confront. I don't know what kind of trouble you need to address. But this afternoon, it is within your power to address it. There are some of you you look into your family nobody rises up it is like there is a satanic imposition a satanic injun injunction that have been placed over everybody in the family nobody can rise up everybody have been restricted confined and limited you must know how to pray the prayer of declaration and say to yourself as for me i am exempted i am exempted my family is exempted because as for us we are for signs and we are for wonders i am talking about the prayer of declaration are you ready to pray i want you to speak to that situation speak to that condition i want you to turn things around by your declaration by your proclamation by your decree clap your hands and begin to pray right now Oh, open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Mampalias. Mampanto Kapahaya. Roko Posi Kapahanta. Maranka Panta Kalia Kapaya. Maria Kapo Papa. Maria Kapo Papa. You are coming out from every defeat. You are coming out from every failure. You are coming out and breaking through and breaking out from every imposition, every injunction. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth. Make the declaration. Make the proclamation. Decree it. For there shall be a performance. Oh, 
I command your breakthrough to be loose. I command your healing to be loose. I command your deliverance to be loose. I command your glory to be loose. I command your marriage to be loose. I command your destiny to be loose. I command your testimony to be released. In the name of Jesus, I command the doors to open now. In the name of Jesus, unto heaven. Lift up your two hands unto heaven. I want you to make this declaration after me. Everything that I say, say it after me with your hands lifted. I am a miracle. 
I am a miracle. Oh, say it with power. Say it with authority. Say it like you mean it. I am a miracle. I am a miracle. I am a living testimony. I am a living testimony. I am a sign and a wonder. I am a sign and a wonder. I cannot fail. I cannot fail. I cannot be disappointed. I cannot be disappointed. I am not poor. I am not poor. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am favored. I am favored. I am prosperous. I am prosperous. The hand of God. The hand of God is upon me. Is upon me. Every door. Every door that is supposed to. That is supposed to. To open. To open. In my life. In my life. That is shut. That is shut. Open. 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 Now. 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 Now, 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 doors, doors, breakthrough, breakthroughs, open, open, doors, doors of my deliverance, of my deliverance, open, open, doors, doors of my greatness, of my greatness, open, open, now, 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 I declare, I declare my atmosphere, my atmosphere is changed, is changed for the better, for the better. Situation. My situation is changed. Is changed for the better. For the better. My circumstance. My circumstance is changed. Is changed for the better. For the better. I declare. I declare. I am elevated. I am elevated. I am promoted. I am promoted. I declare. I declare. I am restored. I am restored. I lack nothing. 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 The days. The days. Of tears, of tears, the days, the days of delay, of delay, the days, the days of disappointment, of disappointment, the days, the days of setback, of setback, the days, the days of pain, of pain, the days, the days of lack, of lack, the days, the days of scarcity, of scarcity is over, 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 is over. Clap your hands and begin to pray. Papa, 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 Jesus, lift up your hands and begin to thank God. Open your mouth and thank Him. Open your mouth and thank Him. Thank you, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Open your mouth and thank Him. Thank Him. Thank Him. Thank Him. Thank Him. Thank Him. Lift up your hands and worship. A God that's in the sky, Babu. How can I explain?
a round of applause and please you may take your seat hallelujah amen well it is time for tithe and offering it's time for tithe and offering tithe is 10 percent of your increase 10 percent of your income the bible says that it belongs to the lord he said bring all the tithe into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house hallelujah amen you can give through any of the mediums that you see on your screen. Any of the mediums that you see on your screen. 
all our online viewers and members, you can give through any of the medium that you see on your screen. You can give digitally and you can also give by check or by cash. If you are here and you need an offering envelope, just lift up your right hand. Protocol will locate you and give you an offering envelope. If you need an offering envelope, just lift up your right hand and protocol will locate you and give you an offering envelope. If you need an offering envelope, lift up your hands. Protocol will locate you and give you an offering envelope. If you are writing a check, please kindly make it payable to Prayer City. Either Prayer City or Eagles Chapel. Prayer City or Eagles Chapel. Whichever one appeals to you. If you are writing a check, make it payable to Prayer City or Eagles Chapel. Protocol, somebody is on my left that needs an envelope. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. If you have your tithe, please kindly come forward with your tithe. If you have your tithe, kindly come forward with your tithe. Even if you have given digitally, I want you to come forward. I want you to come forward. I want to pray with you. I want you to lift up your hands, lift up your tithe, your offering, your tithe unto God. Heavenly Father, behold their fight. They are giving in obedience to your word. And so, Father, I take authority and I rebuke the devourer in their life. And I declare that the devourer will not devour their harvest. The devourer will not devour their blessings, their breakthrough, their increase. I declare in the name of Jesus that you will cause them to operate from the place of more than enough and don't withhold any good thing from them in Jesus' name. Amen. Please. I want you to bow your head and I want you to pray over your offering. Don't just give because you have to give to appeal to your religious conscience. I want you to give with expectation to receive from God. And so if you are giving in expectation to receive from God, then it means that you have to pray over your offering. You have to pray over your offering. You have to pray over your offering. What are you believing God for this week? What are you trusting God for this week? Your offering is a point of contact. Your offering is your seed to release that miracle, to release that breakthrough. Heavenly Father, I declare in the name of Jesus, as your people give, let that which they have petitioned and requested of you be granted in Jesus' name. Amen. Please rise on your feet. Please rise on your feet. Protocol will direct you as how to take your offering. VOT will lead us. This kind God, another one, no deal. This kind God, another one, no deal. This kind God, another one, no deal. Oh, come on, clap your hands and shake your body.
Hallelujah. Please, you may be seated in the heavenly places. So, this afternoon we are gathered and one of the reasons for the gathering is for Mama Faustina and the family. Hallelujah. Amen. They are here to say, God, in all things, we give you thanks. After the departure of our own brother who has gone to be with the Lord, a gentleman, a quiet man, and a man that loved God dearly with all of his heart. A very calm person with a calm uh, demeanor. A man of few words who has gone ahead of us. We have not lost him. We are going to see him again. Hallelujah. Amen. So, Mama Foste and family, I want you all to come forward. I am the oldest son. Um, for the past few months, it's been we've been going through a lot of hardships. Um, our father passed away during in the month of March fifteenth, and we buried him April twentieth. Uh, today, we just want to give thanks to God for giving us the strength to get through all of the hardships, all the trials and tribulations. Um, I would also like to give thanks to Pastor Paul and Sister Jackie, uh, Pastor Grant and First Lady in the church for y'all's support. 
I would also like to give thanks to everyone that has came today. Um, without y'all support, we would be stranded. Um, it's been hard for my mom, my brother, my sister, and my nephew and niece. Uh, I just want to give thanks to God and that just to give us that strength to continue on. I know that my father is still with us and there is life after death. Amen. It's not easy. It's not easy. Even just picking the microphone and just listening to Gabriel, you know, speak concerning the dad. It, it is a very difficult and <laughs> almost an unsurmountable mountain because his presence is everywhere. His presence is everywhere. They get up before they get up with their father. Mama Faustina, get up with the husband. And all of a sudden, you get up alone and there is no husband. They get up and there is no dad. The things he used to do around in the house, the conversations he used to have with them is no longer there. Let me tell you, it is not enough just to give your condolences. It is a very difficult, challenging situation that you are confronted with each and every day. and every day I cannot imagine what Gabriel and the brother are going through because their dad will iron their pillowcase for them because they do, he doesn't want them to sleep on a pillow that is wrinkled will iron their dress it's not that they can iron but he would do it for them iron it for them he, he enjoyed doing it and then all of a sudden you have to iron your dress and whilst you are ironing this is what I usually don't do that does it for me all of a sudden the pillowcases are wrinkled and I'm ironing it myself when dad would do it you will never visit them, Mama Faustina, whether you like it or not. When you are going, you will carry, I want to use the word container of food. Container. If it is not 40 footer, it is 20 footer. Whether you like it or not. And it is the man himself that will go and do the groceries. And to make sure that that happens, it doesn't matter who comes to the house. So it is a very difficult, challenging moment for this family. That is why even this afternoon being Thanksgiving, we still have to keep them in our prayer. Mama Fosti, the children, the grandchildren, we have to keep them in our prayer. Because where Gabriel and his brother and his sister are right now, I have been there. You know, before, as a pastor, when I go to funerals and things happen like that, you know, usually we say, oh, it is God that giveth, it is God that taketh. Don't worry. He will enshroud you with his peace. So, if you have not been there, it is easy to say those kind of things until you get there and you realize that it is much 
difficult and complex than just saying that the Lord has given, the Lord has taken, you will be fine. It took me a long time, over 15 years, to recover from my dad passing away. Over 15 years. It is very hard and difficult. So what I want you to do for me this afternoon for this family is for all of you to stand up. All of you stand up. You are going to pray for this family. You know, when Gabriel was speaking, you can literally hear the pain in his voice. So it has been hard. It has been difficult. And I'm telling you, it's hard. It's difficult. I want us to pray for this family. That the Lord will wrap his arms around them. The Lord will put on them and envelope them with the peace that surpasses and supersedes every understanding. I want you to stretch forth your hands and I want you to pray for them. Speak over them. Speak over them. Pray for them. Speak over them right now. Speak over them. Speak over them. That the Lord will protect them. That the Lord will keep them. That the Lord will preserve them. That his holy and his righteous hand will be upon them for good and not for evil. That he will guide them. He will lead them. He will order their steps. He will be a father to them and be a husband to them. He will provide for them. He will supply all their needs. That they will lack nothing and that God will not withhold any good thing from them. Heavenly Father, you that hear prayers, you that answered prayers, it is written that unto you shall all flesh come. Father, today we lift up Mama Fosti, the children, the grandchildren, and the family before your throne of grace change their weakness for your strength clothe them with your glory clothe them with your goodness clothe them with your peace let your mighty and your glorious hand be upon them for good and not for evil father let the heavens open over them as long as they live let this affliction that has befallen them let it not rise up the second time wipe their tears and put a smile on their face turn their mourning into dancing turn their lamentation into jubilation do for them what only you
want to thank the church because the word of God says in every situation we thank the Lord we thank the Lord for the life my uncle a friend a confidant we thank the Lord that today the children stand to bury their father and not their father buried them we are grateful to God we thank the Lord that he's no longer suffering because sickness ravaged his body but God sustained him we want to thank the church we want to thank Pastor Paul for standing by him during the funeral prayer it was not easy but God with God he said everything is possible we want to stand on the authority of the word of God today that he shall be well with the Donko family and as the pastor has prayed affliction will not arise the second time the children will live to take care of their mother Amen. and they will enjoy, she will enjoy the fruit of her labor Amen. thank you everybody and God bless us all in Jesus name Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Please, you may take your seat. God richly, God richly bless you. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Amen and amen and amen and amen. Well, quickly before the announcement, uh, where is Brother Emmanuel? Before Brother Emmanuel comes up on stage, I want to do a very quick introduction, so important, uh, I need to do this. Um, I want uh, Brother Elvis and Liz to come forward. You should be jumping and screaming and I'm about to make an important announcement. Why I do something, instrumentalists do something. Listen, if you don't rejoice with them, you are jealous. If you don't rejoice to them, you are, you are envious. Clap your hands, stamp your feet, give the Lord a shout. He has given us victory. I the Bible says we should mourn with those that mourn, and we should laugh and celebrate Hallelujah. with those that celebrate. They are celebrating. Hallelujah. We are celebrating them. Shout here! Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah! Please, you may be seated in the heavenly places. Hey. Amen. So they are standing in front of you for the first time, and this is the first announcement to let you know that September twentieth. It is happening live in Khaled. September 20th, it is happening live in Khaled. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And so, get your wedding dress ready. Get your shoes ready. And let's celebrate with them. They are amazing, 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 amazing people. Amazing people. Amazing daughter, amazing son. Very radical like the father. Hallelujah. Yes. In this life, if you are going to make any headway and prevail and overcome, you cannot be normal. You have to be crazy. Hallelujah. Amen. So I'm looking forward to September 20th and let all of us convey, come in our numbers and let us celebrate this holy matrimony between Elvis and the sweetie papai. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Amen. I will be bringing you the details of everything uh, next week. Hallelujah. Give them a round of applause as they take their seat. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Brother Emmanuel. Amen. What do you say to Papa? God bless you. May God increase you next week when we gather. You have what it takes to be a blessing. Amen. We want to take our building offering uh, very, very quickly. Building offering. Building offering. Building offering. So please bring the offering tray. And let's do justice. Amen. Don't forget we are still building. And I want to bring something to your attention. I think um, we have forgotten what befell us. And this is very serious. Maybe we probably don't know this. The country we live in is a low-context culture country. I'll say it again. It's a low-context culture country. What that means is that it's a country of laws. And we have high-context culture countries where laws or the rule of law doesn't really work. Here they work by laws. And I want to make sure you understand this. We have two parts of the church. The sanctuary and the administrative block. If we don't hurry up and fix that place, we'll be kicked out of this place very, very soon. It's just a conditional thing. You probably maybe don't know. So please, don't get to the place where we are too comfortable thinking that because the sanctuary is over and done with, it's okay. Please, we don't want to go back to San Francisco, California. So let's do justice. Every Sunday, incorporate that into your schedule and your budget. That when we come, we are giving to build the administrative block of the church. Amen. So please, if you have your offering, let's do gently. Amen. Anybody here who wants to give to support the church? Building offering. Very, very important. Don't build your houses in Africa only. Let's build a house of God first. And God will take care of yours. Because of you, the dollars will go up. So when you send money home, it will take care of everything. Amen. Amen. God bless you for giving. Hallelujah. Do we have anyone here for the first time? Maybe today is your very, very, very first time worshiping with us in this sanctuary. Please, kindly be on your feet. And I appreciate them for us. I appreciate them for us. You are a VIP. I want you to know that we don't take your presence here for granted. And right after church, please do not be in a hurry to leave. Right after church, you want to position yourself right here. We have a, a woman. I think she's not here today. Who's, um, please be, be on your feet. Let them see you. We have an amazing, amazing woman of God here in our midst. She has a message from Papa and his wife to you and a gift or a package from Papa and his wife to you. Amen. Amen. At this juncture, we're going to call the announcer to come upstage and give Sister Eva. It's in the building. Please come upstage. Or oh, let's appreciate that even as she comes upstage to give us the announcement. And also hang tight for the promo videos that will be playing. That way you have an idea of what is coming up in the coming weeks and months. As soon as she's through, 
The next voice you hear is the voice of Apostle Paul for the benediction. God bless you for coming. Invite someone next week and come in time next week. God bless you. Thank you, Brother Emmanuel. Hallelujah. It's good to see you all. <laughs> all right, please let's stay tuned for the following announcement. So we all know our Sunday service starts um, at 9 a.m. to 12.30 a.m. Sunday school, which is Bible studies, start 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. So please let's come in on time for that. That is the place that you can ask any questions that you can ask during, you know, regular Sunday service when pastor is preaching. So if you have anything you want to clarify, please come in early on Sunday morning during Bible studies. Hallelujah. Our midweek services are starting this Tuesday, July 30th, and it's from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Please take note that it's a full church service. Amen. Don't forget to also tune in into No One Will Say Where Is Your God every evening, with the exception of Tuesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays. And it's always from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. Please send your prayer requests and testimonies to www eaglesprayermeeting.com. Amen. God has been doing amazing things in people's lives. Please stay tuned. Amen. The children and youth ministry, we have the rising generation and the omega generation. Please sign in your kids every Sunday morning. We do have age-appropriate teaching. Please don't let them miss what you know, they need to know with this crazy world that we are in, it's good to let your children be in the house of, the, of God just to learn, just so they can better their lives. Amen. All right, let's get excited for this one. <laughs> so we do have Eagles Chapel Bible Institute coming up. It's organized by Eagles Chapel Prayer, Prayer City Eagles Chapel, and will be offering a free comprehensive Bible teaching through experienced theologians. It is a six-week intensive Bible course set to start on September the 7th, and then it's going to be every Saturday after then. The time will be from 9 a.m., and certificates will be issued upon successful completion. Amen. There is a QR code. Yes, for those who are tech savvy, please scan and register for this. If you can, just go ahead and contact Pastor Paul for registration and any further information. Amen. We do encourage everybody to sign up, whether you are a member of the church or not. Amen. All right, we do have a couple of household rules and safety precautions. So as you can see, we do have steps in the sanctuary. So please always watch your step, okay? We don't want to have to worry about calling the ambulance because somebody trips. So please watch your step in the sanctuary. And we also advise parents to not feed their children in the sanctuary. If you need a place to feed your child, please reach out to protocol and they will direct you to the right area. Amen. So, uh, we, As you all know, we um, are very great author in the sanctuary, which is Pastor Raphael Grant, launched two amazing books last week. Over, I mean, on Friday. Let's give him a round of applause. So, in case you missed it, the first book is Radical Faith, Crazy Believers, and the second one is Binding the Strong Man and Pulling Down Stronghold. Please, if you made the pledge, see Dr. Yvonne or Pastor Paul and redeem your pledge. We have up until next week, Sunday, to redeem it. And if you didn't grab a coffee, the bookstore is open, so stop by and grab one. Everybody should get one. It's a very informative book for our spiritual growth. Amen. All right. We have another exciting thing coming up. The voice of the prophets. Amen. So it's going to be August 22nd through August 25th. It's every night, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, and of course, Sunday morning, we'll come in for our regular service. Um, there's going to be a promo video after, the, um, after I'm done um, with the announcement, and we'll have further information for you all. We also have Shabak coming up September 20th. We are still working on a great lineup of guest worshipers, so please stay tuned for that. 
but we are not going to leave out our amazing VOT. Let's give them a round of applause. Please mark your calendars. So August 22nd through 25th for the Voice of the Prophet, and Shabbat will be September 20th. It's a night of worship, praise, all the amazing things you can think of. So please mark your calendars and stay tuned for the promo videos. Thank you. Prayer City Eagles Chapel presents Voice of the Prophets Conference. Date, Thursday, August 22nd through to Sunday, August 25th, 2024. Time, 7 p.m. each night. Sunday morning, 9 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. And Sunday evening from 7 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Guest speakers, Dr. Henry Gossenafu. I pray for you. You might not have come early, but you will overtake those who went ahead of you. Don't get intimidated by those who have gone ahead of you because I see the overtaker's grace coming upon you. And Prophet Isaac Owusu Bempa. By the oil upon the apostle, you will live long. We declare that that arrow that carries stroke back to where it is coming from, we cancel sickness. You are free in the name of Jesus. Visionaire and host pastor, Apostle Raphael Grant. I don't know who I came to speak to, but there are some of you under the sound of my voice. There are forces, there are powers, there are entities, they are agents from hell, they are agents from the kingdom of darkness. They are men and women who have given an allegiance to the devil, who have come in covenant with the powers of darkness to make sure that your prophetic word doesn't come to pass. Theme, he will do it again. Venue, Prayer City Auditorium, 3100 Joe Jerkins Boulevard, Austell, Georgia, 30127. is going to be epic. Prophetic ministration, healing, miracles, and deliverance, all are invited. Thank you, media team. Okay, we wanted to give you an experience of what happened at the youth camp. Uh, last week, we were still tired from all the activities, so we couldn't go into details. And so we wanted to bring you a video so that you have a, a feel of what happened over there. So I'm going to give you a brief synopsis, and Israel and Rachel here have a beautiful piece. Israel has written everything down. Uh, he wanted to make sure that he has everything. Rachel also has something she will tell you. So we left here on Friday um, around 1 o'clock. We got there. It was about an hour and 30 minutes. We got there. The kids settled in. And in the evening, we had a movie. We watched the movie based on faith. And your kids are very intelligent. I'm not saying it because I'm standing in front of you. They um, gave a brilliant point, what they understood by the, the movie. And it will surprise you that almost all the kids were on the dad because they thought the dad was not there. Um, so maybe this is a call for the dads to step up. Um, <laughs> as we're going, as I was going through the pictures and the videos, one thing that dawned on me that I thought uh, we took for granted was that not a single child left the front door. For all the three days that we, we stayed there, not a single child left the front door. You've raised amazing kids, and thank you for that. They didn't give us any issue at, at all. <laughs> when it was time to play, they gave it, they're all very competitive. And when it was time to study, they kept focus. We did not have a single issue. And so I wanted to say thank you for raising these amazing kids. And um, the next morning was very packed. So they had their morning devotion. They did a little praise workout. And then we broke into small groups. So when you saw the cluster of kids in the video, they had small groups every 30 minutes. They went to a different class. So they did that for one hour, 30 minutes. And then pastor came and met them. In the evening, um, again, we did a lot of games. So uh, late afternoon, we did a lot of games. The evening, we had a um, prayer section. We went to bed and came back. So I'm going to hand over the microphone to Israel to share what he learned. The Omega Generation went on a trip to the Blue Ridge. While there, we had a lot of fun and we learned a lot of things. We talked about things like why knowing your identity is important, the heart of a Christian, and the heart of an unbeliever and what is inside of it, and things that Christians do that makes people not want to come to the faith. When Pastor Grant came, we talked about your calling, as in what the Lord has called us to do and be, and how to know and be sure of what it is. 
we read we read through the story of Moses and his birth in the first topic, why your identity is important. In the second topic, we talked about how the heart of an unbeliever has no light and Satan has corrupted it, whilst the heart of a true Christian has the light of God within their hearts. On the third topic, things Christians do that makes people not want to come to the faith, we just discussed things that misrepresent Christianity and are not good for its growth. Finally, on the last topic, when Pastor Grant came, he answered our questions concerning our calling and how to know what it is. Overall, this retreat was a great experience, not just for me, but for all of my colleagues. We truly enjoyed it. Thank you for allowing me to speak and talk about the Omega Generations Retreat. So personally, I wanted to speak more on when Pastor was talking about finding your purpose, because I felt that spoke to me more. And he was talking about how to find your purpose, you have to ask the Lord, and he can show you through dreams, or he could show you through maybe visions or things that you're interested in and things like that. And when you do find um, your purpose, that you should be watching what you do because anything you do can affect your purpose in the future. You know, you could do something today and say, oh, that doesn't matter. 30 years from now, that could destroy your life. So you should be careful what you're doing. And with that, when you know your purpose, the Lord will help you. But you should also, you know, do your part in studying or, you know, practicing or whatever you have to do to make sure your purpose comes to pass. So that's what I learned from what Pastor was talking about. Good job, Rachel and Israel. Thank you guys so much. Hallelujah. Amen. Before Pastor Paul comes for uh, benediction, that is why it is important and imperative that when we have this youth camp, parents, please kindly allow your children to go to this camp meeting. It is very intense. When I got there, I was surprised. Very intense, very disciplined. There was time for prayer. There was time for devotion. There was time for Bible studies. I mean, everything was in order. And they were very engaged and very disciplined. And the food was off the chain. The drinks was all over the place. There was barbecue and all that. They had a lot of fun. And they learned a lot. And I got to know the children intimately and so please the next camp meeting for the youth please allow your children to be part of it allow your children to be part of it you will not regret it hallelujah like they said in this crazy world you want to bring up your children in the fear of god in the fear of god hallelujah Amen. Well, before Pastor Paul comes up, August 18th, August 18th, uh, you are going to be uh, standing with me to do something very special. Um, we are going to be doing a send-off for Minister Mercy. Minister Mercy, please kindly stand up. Let them see how pretty you are. That's Minister Mercy. August 18th, we are going to be doing a send-off for Mr. Messi. Mr. Messi have been with me for years. For years. I believe about 12, 13 years. She has been with me. Now, the Lord is calling her back home to Kenya. Uh, she and I have had this conversation two years ago when she wanted to go back to Kenya. But now the time has fully come that she has to go back to Kenya. She has enjoyed America. It's time to continue with her mandate, her assignment, and what God has put in her spirit in Kenya. And because she has been faithful to this ministry. When you talk about faithfulness, today is not the day I will talk about it. I will talk about it August 18th. When you talk about a woman who is genuine, genuine, not hypocrite, 
not pretentious. You are talking about Minister Mercy. Minister Mercy. Clean heart, decent, discipline, fears God, and straightforward. I always tell her that she is different. She is different from, I am very sorry, I don't mean to offend anybody. But because of my personal encounter and experience with her, she is different from every king that I have met. And it is not an exaggeration. And I tell her, an amazing woman of God. Amazing woman of God. And so, August 18th will be her last day in church. And I want you to come with gifts. Gifts. I didn't say plates. Don't come with wine glasses. Don't come with any dress. She has so many. Amen. We don't want a sex luggage for her. Amen. You are going to bless her with cash. Amen. So bring some money. Let it be heavy. Let it be weighty. And let's appreciate Minister Mercy. Please, I want you to do this for me. I love this woman. I love this woman. This woman has stood with me through the thick and the thin. Has always been there. There had never been any time that I have called her. That I said, Minister Mercy, I want you to do this. I want you to do that. I want you to do this. That she had given me any excuse. She is always there. Ready to do anything that I entrust into her hands. And if I entrust anything into her hands, I can go to sleep. I don't need to check up to make sure if it is going to be done. It is a done deal. Hallelujah. So please, I want you to help me on August 18th to appreciate this an amazing, wonderful woman of God, Minister Mercy. So I want you to take note of the date. Hallelujah. Help me welcome Pastor Paul. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put your hands together to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. And put your hands together for Papa. Thank you so much as usual. And for the First Lady also, thank you so much. Please rise to your feet, if you may, for the benediction. Thank you. Bow down your heads for the benediction. May the Lord bless you and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord raise his countenance and make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his glorious countenance and may he grant you peace. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. May we share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you.